This video is all to do with measures of spread, and we're going to be looking at a few different types that you'll need for your maths GCSE. Measures of spread are all to do with describing the variability of your data set. In other words, are the values in it super spread out and all over the place, or are they all relatively similar, relatively kind of close to each other? The simplest one of these to calculate is the range, so let's start with that. So we've got a small data set here with seven numbers in it, and we want to find the range. All you have to do to find the range is find the difference between the largest value and the smallest value. In other words, you find the smallest value and then you take that away from the largest value. So in this example, the smallest value is four and the largest value is 12. So to find the range, we just do 12 minus four, which is eight. So the range is eight. You can practice these questions and any other maths GCSE questions over at my website, mathskitchen.com. I'll put a link up here and one down in the description as well. Not only can you practice questions that are automatically marked, but we can keep a track of your progress and we can make recommendations that are going to get you towards your target grade as quickly as possible. So get practicing today. Just follow the link up here or down in the description. Now we're going to find the interquartile range for this set of data and the first thing that we need to do is to put those values in order and I'm going to do it from smallest to biggest. Now it's surprisingly easy to make you know simple mistakes with this so what I do is I cross those numbers off as I work through it just to make sure I don't list a number twice or that I don't miss out a number. So the smallest number here is 10, so I'll write that down, cross it off and then we've got 11, I'll cross that off, 13, cross it off and so on. I'll quickly go through the rest of those. Now we've got our list of values and we've got them in order from smallest to biggest. We need to find the lower quartile or the first quartile and the upper quartile or the third quartile and we need those in order to find the interquartile range. So the way we find those in the same way that the median you find by finding the value that's halfway along or halfway through your data set the lower quartile or first quartile you find by going a quarter of the way through and then the upper quartile is three quarters of the way through. And just as with the median we've got a formula that we can use to tell us the position of the first quartile and the position of the third quartile. So to find the position of the first quartile all you have to do is a quarter of n add 1 and n just represents the number of values in your data set. So in this example, we've got seven values, so it's gonna be a quarter of seven add one. In other words, a quarter of eight, which is two. So the lower quartile is gonna be the second value along. And we use that notation there, the Q, with the little one next to it, to indicate the lower quartile or the first quartile. And in this example, you can see that the lower quartile is 11. The upper quartile is very similar. We just do three quarters of n plus one to find the position of that upper quartile. So in this example, that's three quarters of seven add one. In other words, three quarters of eight, which is six, tells us that the upper quartile is the sixth value along in our data set, which in this example is 17. So we found the lower quartile, the upper quartile, to find the interquartile range is now really, really straightforward. All you've got to do is subtract the lower quartile from the upper quartile. In this example, to find the interquartile range, that is just 17 minus 11. So the interquartile range for this set of data is six. And when you're finding the interquartile range, you are ignoring the top 25%, of values, you're ignoring the bottom 25% of values and you're looking at the range of those middle 50% of values. That way it discounts any anomalies, any kind of outliers at either end of your data set. We're gonna find the interquartile range from this data set that has nine values in it. And the first thing we've got to do is to get them in order. I'm gonna go from smallest to biggest and I'm gonna take care to make sure I don't make any mistakes. So I'm gonna cross them off as I'm going through. So the smallest value that we've got here is 21. I'll write that down, cross it off. The next one up is 25. So I'll write that in my new list, cross it off. And I'm gonna continue like that through the whole list. And then we're going to use our formulas to find the position of the lower quartile and the upper quartile. Those formulas are there. So in this example, we've got nine values in this data set. So the position of the lower quartile, it's going to be a quarter of nine add one. In other words, a quarter of 10 
which is two and a half. So the lower quartile is the second and a half position along in a set of data. So that ends up being halfway between 25 and 27, halfway between the second and third values, which is 26. In this case, it's pretty obvious it's 26. If you end up with numbers and it's not obvious what's halfway between them, the thing you can do is just add those numbers together, add the values together, and then divide it by two. So I've shown you how to do that here with 25 and 27. It gives us an answer of 26, which we knew anyway in this case. And then to find the position of the upper quartile, the third quartile, we just do three quarters of n add one. n is the number of values, so three quarters of nine add one, three quarters of 10, which is seven and a half. So we're looking for the value that is seven and a half along our data set. That is in between, well, the seventh value is 41, the eighth value is 41. So halfway in between those is, is gonna be 41 as well. So actually that was nice and easy, that one. So the lower quartile is 26, the upper quartile is 41. To find the interquartile range, all we've got to do is subtract the lower quartile from the upper quartile. So in this example, that is 41 minus 26, which is 15. So the interquartile range here is 15. Sometimes we want to find the interquartile range from a cumulative frequency diagram. You can see we've got an example here and it's showing the scores that 80 students got in a science test. So what we need to do is to find the lower quartile and the upper quartile. And to find the lower quartile, we find the score that corresponds to a quarter of the way through our data set. So we've got 80 values. All we do is a quarter of 80, which is 20. And then we go up to 20 on the cumulative frequency axis. And we read across and then down to see what that represents as a test score. And it's 24. So we go across from 20, across from a cumulative frequency of 20, and we read down of the test score axis is 24. To find the upper quartile, we need to go three quarters of the way through our data set. We've got 80 values, three quarters of 80 is 60. So we're gonna go up to 60 on our cumulative frequency axis. We're gonna take a line across until we hit that line, and then we're gonna read down and see what that corresponds to on the test scores axis. Okay, and you can see that that corresponds to 36. So the test, the upper quartile for the test scores was 36, the lower quartile was 24. So to estimate the interquartile range from a cumulative frequency diagram, all you have to do is subtract that lower quartile from the upper quartile. In this case, that is 36, take away 24, which is 12. So an estimate for the interquartile range from this cumulative frequency diagram is 12. So that's measures of spread and the key skills you're gonna need for your maths GCSE. Don't forget, as I said earlier, you can practice all of that stuff over at mathskitchen.com. And as you're here, why not have a look around the channel? You may well find there are other videos that can be helpful as well. Um, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in another video.